of control. Never want Hello and welcome to Ah fuck it. Oh come on, Edmund. That we're supposed to be working here. Hello and welcome to Once More with Feeling, Liberation by Christina Aguilera. Never thought I'd be it's a liberation. <laughs> Never thought I'd be saying those words ever. Yeah. Okay. When I signed up to do this with you, I never once thought that Christina Aguilera would be a song. A song, yes, a song. She's now a song. It would never be Christina Aguilera on the list of things we'd be reviewing. And uh, we can chalk this up to the other band that you were thinking about reviewing being what you, I think you said you, that that band was boring, if I remember right. Yeah. So I, um, that's it's a band called Shepherd, and I was sort of like, I tried listening to the album, and I was sort of like, no, this is giving me nothing. So we found out that Christina Aguilera was releasing the most powerful metal metal album ever in history. <laughs> so we figured, Liberation, let's fucking do this. <laughs> so we dove in, and. Um, I almost cried, to be completely honest. I was unprepared for this album for many reasons. One, it being Christina Aguilera. And two, I didn't expect the album to be what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, that's I, that's a thing. That's a thing. I, Go, Christina. I, I, wasn't, I, I genuinely liked this album. And I wasn't... Also something I thought I would never hear him say. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting to. I will admit, a lot of it hit way too close to home for comfort. That's because at my turn, it might be a surprise to the three of you who happen to listen to this. Edmund is broken. He actually is broken. You see, right about now, I'll cue the violin music. Edmund has gone through a very difficult change in his life. Puberty just struck, has struck home in Edmund's heart. He's finally growing peach fuzz. So, for all of us out there, we are with you, Edmund. <laughs> oh, you utter bastard. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, let's talk about... Just, just talk about Liberation. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a really, really strange album. It starts out, you know, kind of... Kind of uh, it's kind of standard for her, you know. A fun, little, a fun little opening tune kind of swaps into a rather weird tune for the mm. second one, the spoken dialogue of... Uh, searching for Maria, which they put a lot of spoken parts. Yeah, in it's not just music; it's actually like little. Want to call them skits? I mean, what what else would you really call them? Interludes. I, I think, yeah, that works. And then it goes into the song Maria, which is not bad. Yeah, it's a nice little opener for an actual real song because Liberation is more or less just like an instrumental instrumental open. Then you go from this nice song of Maria to Sick of Sitting, which kind of goes back, what? What would you say? About four or five decades in style? Um, I'd say it's, sort of, it's got elements of 70s funk rock. Yeah, like Woodstock would definitely have been appropriate for this. And it's one of those, I was not expecting this. I'm not complaining. This is a really cool song. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting it. So... Yeah, Sick of Sitting was good. It was enjoyable. It was surprising. And then it went to Dreamers, another little spoken skit. And this one needs a massive asterisk next to it. It has a bunch of young ladies, uh, ranging, I'm guessing, between four and five years old to a couple that sound a bit older than it, like I'm guessing seven or eight. So a bunch of little young children, girls, little young girls, who are repeating various statements such as, um, you know, they they want to be princesses, they want to be president, they want to grow up to be doctors. Basically, it's aspirations of young girls dreaming about being something bigger than themselves and who they presently are. And it's a really good message. Really good message. When I grow up, I want to be a screenwriter. I want to be a journalist. I want to be a lion. I want to be a lion. I am a lioness. I want to be a superhero. I am a superhero. I want to be a singer. I want to be a singer. I want to be a boss. I want to be a doctor. I want to be the boss. And it's what pains me to have to bring up what's presently happening in the world, or at least in this, <clears throat> at least here in America. That yeah. groups like incels and the Me Too movement that's popped up to more or less counter bad 
people trying to stop girls from growing up to being powerful women. Mm -hmm. Something that happens very often in this country, and it's kind of messed up. And I was kind of curious if that's the same kind of attitude that exists over in your side of the world versus where I happen to live. Not really, because... Uh, this is where we get into the I'd rather not bring up this fact because of the fact that it's in regards to the Tories, but because we have had sort of like in the highest levels of power women, that attitude hasn't really carried over here. Well, that's a good thing because over here... Um... Like, for instance, incels have been a, a movement that's been very quiet. It hasn't really been very big for quite some time. Because the first time I heard about the, the concept of incels, because they hadn't picked that name yet, mm -hmm. um, was about 10 or so years ago. Mm -hmm. I had started to see, like, mentions on various websites of guys who basically, they refer to themselves as, like, the anti-feminist movement and... Um, that kind of thing. And it quickly went from just a, a bunch of guys who were bitching about the fact that they thought women were too uppity and whatnot to shifting in tone to that violence towards women is, is justifiable, that women are, um, per, are basically criminals because they won't sleep with them, to just some really horrible shit. The kind of thing that genuinely is borderline dangerous not it's not even borderline it's becoming quite dangerous the incel movement has started to spark a very very ugly ugly just everything mm. ugly outward outward opinion towards women in some cases a very dangerous outward opinion towards women and to the point where they're no longer afraid to mention this in public they'll walk around and scream at women that you know you're pigs and you deserve to be in jail where i can rape you and just really bad things so to hear a message as simple and pure and uplifting as in this 37 second track it's a real short little track and it's very simply just a bunch of kids just talking about their dreams for the future i was so unprepared for that that i kind of started crying while i was listening to it which was really awkward because of where i was <laughs> I was driving and I was on my way to a customer to go drop off something at the customer's house and um, I walked out of my car and I was a little teary eyed and I walked up and gave him the package and it was quite uncomfortable because <laughs> here I am this rather tall rather large guy just walking up and almost openly weeping handing this lady <laughs> a bunch of stuff <laughs> oh man that was that from like the outside looking in that was genuinely a probably very worrying experience for them. <laughs> well, on the inside, I just wanted to go, hug this lady and tell her it'll all be okay. <laughs> to which she would probably be screaming rape and hit me with pepper spray. But, you know, my heart was in the right place, okay? <laughs> so, yeah. And from Dreamers, it kind of directly having a through line to fall in line, which essentially plays off the whole what you were saying about the incels yeah. and it's essentially a backlash against both the current political climate that you've got in america which is fucking insane yeah it's and the social climates that it's been distilled into a very angry song i'm in two minds about it i do like the message that is presented by that song i really like the lyricism, but I feel that in some ways the music detracts from the message being presented. I find that the music is a bit too loud. Oh, okay. You can't actually hear what, at times, I have to strain to hear what's actually being said. That's more of an issue with production value, and we've frequently commented on how production can really affect the quality of a song. Yeah, I'll give you that. In and of itself, I do like the song. I just feel like it could be remastered. Well, I'm sure the live version will probably be a bit different, and I'm sure, I'm sure that this song, I'm sure a lot of this album will probably be either remixed or it'll end up in movies and, and or in commercials because something tells me that this this album is going to actually kind of blow up. Yeah. Which, of course, now that I've said it, no one's going to listen. <laughs> but, you know, I can always hope. I can always hope. Yeah. I can hope. 
And this is really weird for me to say because I genuinely do not like Christina Aguilera's music at all. Yeah. I've been avoiding it for fucking decades. Yeah. But that having been said, I, right on. I, I like this. Yeah, this is this has been a first for me because I have never before actively intentionally listened to any Christina Aguilera song at all. Yeah, that's this is this was never never something I was looking forward to. Once oh, once oh, pardon? once we got talked into this, I was prepared to be completely mortified and yeah. Oh, pardon. What the... There is one instance, but that was purely that was purely to satisfy my morbid horrified curiosity because she sampled a song. A Marilyn Manson song. What's wrong with that? I mean, I'm it... sure that Skin Suit Boy really enjoyed that. <laughs> she sampled Beautiful People. But that's not even really his song, is it? I thought that, I thought that was a cover of somebody else's. Or am I thinking... No, You're thinking, thinking of... Uh, Personal Jesus. My bad. My bad. I'm thinking of... Um, yeah. Mm. I but, apologize. But, uh, Too many well, songs in the world. But anyway, it's one of those... The sample... I've said before, I'm not against sampling, but it completely misses the point of the song because it's going, oh, all of the beautiful people shining like diamonds. It's sort of like, you missed the point completely. She simply reimagined the point. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Like She apparently got a bunch of Kanye West on this album, but since I never really listened to Kanye West before... I didn't catch any of it, but I'm going to assume that it probably was bits and pieces of Fall in Line, because I did hear her, I think, sampling somebody else. Mm. And there were a couple of other songs where I heard what sounded like sampling. So, wouldn't surprise me. I remember reading something about it. Once again, I have no idea because I don't listen to Kanye West. Because mm. that's another another artist that I've never been interested yeah. in. Yeah. So, that's Fall in Line. Um, right Moves was... All right, if I remember yeah. right. Right I'm moves. We listen to a small sampling of that. Right moves I found difficult to listen to because of the tonal whiplash. Because it was all sort of like ah, you've gone from highly politicized to suddenly a sort of West Indian style song about just having a good lover. What? What the mm. fuck is? What the fuck is reality right now? Well, it, it's it's about having the proper times with a lover in the place of the thing. Liberation, okay? Liberation. <laughs> but you get what I mean. It's sort of like, you have this song where it's sort of like, Oh dear God, I think I might have died from political energy. To be fair, she probably was like, well, okay, now we did the really supercharged song. Let's probably back it up a little bit and go with the more fan favorite style music. Because it seems like it kind of slips in the same same way as it continues into Like I Do. Mm. Still feels kind of like the same style, same concept of music where it's trying to shift more into more mainstay, you know, that style of music where it's not focusing on, okay, woman empowerment. Now it's more along the lines of like, yeah, I just want to have myself a good time and kind of relax and enjoy myself. Of course, like I do, that was one of two songs on the entire album I outright wanted to skip. Fair enough. Which leads us to the next song, and I know this is going to be a hard one for mm. you. <sighs> Deserve. Now, Edmund here has been through a very rough life-altering experience as of late and we're not going to talk too much about that per se and more along the lines of just how well crafted this song is yeah because even from my own personal experiences i can definitely feel very similar to the way that edmund does about the song where it kind of talks about a pre about a present life experience because we've all been through well i shouldn't say all of us but most of us out there in this in this world have been through either a breakup or a relationship of some kind where shit's gone completely south and we we don't feel like we really deserved the person we were with and so we beat ourselves up and the song is well done it's got a nice beat to it her voice is fucking emotionally powerful in the song yeah and as i was listening to it i started to cringe knowing that this was gonna hurt you that this song was gonna be one of the hardest parts of this album for you i this it's this song, this 
song basically had the this is about me effect. Which means it did it right. Yeah. It's an emotionally charged song that does what it intended to do. It's not one of those ones that falls flat. It's not a piece of crap. It's genuinely emotionally charged. It's going to strike the right notes with the right people. It's going to hopefully give people that song that they can blare and scream out and release that emotional tension. Mm. So, Christina Aguilera, this is probably my favorite song that you put on this album. Deserve is an incredible, incredible song. It is one that if I end up in another breakup, I might be screaming because <laughs> it's legitimately as good. And once again, I did not expect to say these words. <laughs> I expected this to be a parody review where we just sit around and go, yeah, this is a piece of crap. And <laughs> I did not. I, I think that, you know, that this person should hang up their hat. No, completely the opposite. Where the hell did you come up with this stuff? It's How did you feel into my soul? It's like, I... I I, I honestly don't know what it was, but just... I, I really don't know, because I'm... I, same, I was not expecting to really enjoy this album. For the moments where I was going, Oh dear God, I might... I might, um... I might have to just step away, because this is actually simultaneously really good, but also fucking depressing. Yeah... And it's it's genuinely an enjoyable track. I really am glad that I got to experience this with you because this has been that just sounded quite um, light in the loafers. <laughs> this has just been an incredible experience getting to listen to this song and really tear it apart and think deep down as to what I want to say because it's not doing reviews like this. It's not just listening to music because we have to actually think about will this actually have any kind of impact on people around us do we think that if this album is good do we think we should need to like you know suggest this to people and for this track alone i genuinely hope that people listen to this album for that one track alone because it's not very often that you hear a track that your brain immediately goes oh i can think of 50 people who need to hear this mm. Usually it's just like, oh, I bet you that, you know, Jacob would like this or that, you know, Josephine would like that or whatever. Instead, this is one of those songs where it's like so many of my friends and family have been through really bad heartbreak where they felt like they weren't worthy of the other person. This song is perfect for them. This is honestly emotionally charged. It's well put together. It's... I mean, her voice is hauntingly wonderful in the song. This is one of the few times where it's like, fuck, I kind of want tickets to go listen to Christina Aguilera. <laughs> I'll be sitting there the entire time going, fucking sing deserve. That's the only reason I'm here. I mean, the rest of this album isn't bad, but this is why I'm here. This is the equivalent of piano. This is Piano Man by Billy Joel at this point. <laughs> That's, this is this is now officially that song that song in my head. Every time I hear every time I hear anyone ever ever re reference Christina Aguilera, my brain's now going to immediately pop over to deserve because this is that song for me now. I will be the one person out there in the crowd with my lighter up in the air, not lit, because I'm waiting for that one song. <laughs> but anyway, we can't keep going on about that one song let's continue nonsense deserve forever deserve <laughs> for president 2020 all right anyways you're right you're right you're right um twice i found that really good because of how it it utilizes the various gospel techniques and discusses the contrasts between grandiose and terrible aspects of christina's life yeah because obviously she's had some rough times, but also her, also some good times. So, yeah, mm. I agree. And it's also, I think it's also reflecting on how the media has in some ways observed her in terms of... She is very, um, funnily enough, sexually liberated and forthcoming. And uh, I remember one reviewer describing her as having the social naivete of Miss Piggy. Yeah. And, of course, this is basically reflecting on how she can be demonised and also canonised by the media. Yeah. So it's just, it's very intriguing how that's all being reflected on. 
Oh, wow. There are some very interesting comments on some of these videos. Mm -hmm. Just looking on YouTube, just for fun, more or less just for the fun side of things. And mm -hmm. one of the best comments that I've seen on here is somebody who wrote, who put this, who posted this here. It says, History Listen for the Kids. 1980s, Queen Whitney. 1990s, Queen Mariah. Or then you have the 2000s, Queen Christina. 2009 to 2017, it's the Reign of Clowns. Then 2018, Queen Christina restored. And that kind of is right at this point. Mm. I mean, then of course you got a lot of people who are shouting things along the lines of like, uh, you know, Mariah is still queen and is coming. And then of course people are, are screaming that Beyonce is a big, a big deal. And they're all right, but I, I guess Queen Bee technically, you know, Queen Beyonce technically would be an appropriate one there. So at this point, it's more along the lines of a fight between Beyonce and Christina Aguilera in my, in my mind. Mm. All right, so we can move on to the next one, right? Yeah. Do you feel comfortable with that? All right, yep. so the next one's another little interlude, another little short piece. Mm. You know, the, it's a I Don't Need It Anymore. Which is just a sort of a cappella type piece. Yeah, and it's I think it's more or less trying to it's trying to set the stage for its next song, which was Accelerate, mm. which is just weird. I I I couldn't get into yeah uh, like Accelerate like the the weird vocal effects that open it uh, like it, it almost sounded like deliberate bad singing. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's quite how they would phrase it, but sure. Um. More or less, it's just the fact that she's trying to... She's basically branching out with a lot of different artists mm. on this album. There are a lot of people who helped her out with yeah. this. This particular one's done by, uh, was it Ty Dolla Sign? Yeah. And Two Chains. Two Chains! Oh. Which, I always chuckled at that name. Like, both of those names are great and had great little rapper names. But, <laughs> just Ty Dolla Sign. Oh, okay. Sure, you win. Uh, I, I can't argue that because you have a dollar sign in your name, so fair enough. It's... It's just a different style. I mean, being in England, you're not going to catch all the same styles that we hear here. Mm. I'm just getting to the point where I'm just more or less just used to a lot of these styles. I may not necessarily like them, but they're just, you know, common. Uh, I mean, the thing is, it's ultimately, it, it's a dance track. Yes. And, and I can understand how she would want songs that can be played in the club for people to then get involved and enjoy that makes sense anybody who's involved in any kind of pop at all needs to have to needs to have club songs mm. so um so i i just i feel like there's not really much that can be discussed about it aside from the fact that it's curiously framed at the opening and I think it's so that way everyone, as soon as they start to hear it, can start shouting and screaming and not really go over the music so much as just be involved, so to speak. Because mm. I noticed a lot, of, a lot of music like that is designed specifically that as soon as you hear it, it's distinct. You're going to notice it and go, oh my god, it's blank! And then start, like, you know, getting your groove on while everyone around you goes, yeah, that person's getting their groove on. And they should go back to the closet. <laughs> or what have you. Or maybe that's just me, because <laughs> that's possible. Um, I mean, after that, you've got pipe. Which, that, as soon as you just hear the term pipe, your brain immediately goes, oh, she wants to go lay some pipe, she wants to get laid. Which is... yeah. And it's one of those, ready? Ready. With everything you presented earlier. It's, it's... She just wants to get her groove on, right? <laughs> just let her get her groove on. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, that was another one that I just wanted to skip. Um, I will just quickly touch on the one of the key reasons why I wanted to skip like I do. I know this is going back, but whatever. Um, the rapper was monotonous and uninspired. Music was a cacophonous mess. And they used the Marvin Gaye and Get It On line that was established by Megan Trainer and Charlie Puth. Of all artists, you want to emulate them. Fair enough. Fine. I'm just going to say that I would have burnt the song sheet. You know, I wouldn't have just scribbled out those rhymes they were going to sing and start over from scratch and write new ones. I would have just burnt it. 
Once again, we have a melodramatic British person in the, in, that, in the building. Can we please get our security team to get rid of the melodramatic British person? We have shit to do here. Please, everybody inside the building, get rid of the melodramatic British person. So let's move on to the next song, which is here is another one that kicked you straight in the nuts. Yeah, masochist. Which, I mean, since I just said it kicked you straight in the nuts, you probably enjoyed it, if we're completely honest. Oh, I enjoyed it. It's just, it was sort of a, yeah, right fucking there with you, Christina. So there you go. We've got two very emotionally charged shit went south in my life, and it's all my fault kind of scenarios. And both of them are deeply understandable to anybody out there who's been in that situation. Sorry, I didn't mean to move by, move away from the mic. So, uh, I like the song immensely. Yeah. It's not as emotionally charged in my, in my mind as uh, Deserve was, but it's still good. Mm. I do prefer Deserve over Masochist. But, they're both good. They both get the point across. They have slightly different messages. In this case, it's my fault I'm in this situation versus deserve, which was I don't even deserve to be in the same room as you because you're so much better than me. And I like this song still, though. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's it's still well done. And it really does have the... If you've been through a breakup, whether you're going through the it's my fault periods of it or the I miss them immensely... Masochist kind of works way too well for both situations. And, yeah, when listening to it, it just... I was very close to tears. Aww. This is where, folks, I really wish I could reach out and hug myself and Edmund, but sadly he's too far away. Poor Edmund. <laughs> so, the final song on the, on the list is Unless It's With You. What are your thoughts? Well, I've got one line in my notes here. Okay, now you're taking the fucking piss. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, it is kind of a strange tone to go from, I must be some kind of masochist. And then she like, because this, this essentially is a love song, right? I'm, yeah. I'm not losing my mind, right? Yeah, it is. Like, I'm so glad I'm with you and you're like the most important person to me kind of song. Yeah. It is just such a bizarre shift. Uh, but it's all like tonally it's a real fucking shift but at the same time i can actually comprehend the through line and it's sort of like oh for fuck's sake <laughs> this is what's referred to kids as battered wife syndrome <laughs> or stockholm syndrome from those of you like myself who listen to a certain album <laughs> fucking like 70 times to try to love it <laughs> i wanted to love it i couldn't it was so horrible but none the more but for that on the other hand yeah, this this it's a good song. I could I could hear people like declaring this as like you know their couple song. I mean, I swear to I hope to God no one ever uses Masochist as their couple song. Woo, that'd be a little uncomfortable. <laughs> but this would be a good couple song where it's like, oh my God, this is the song that just totally totally lets me know that I'm in love with Steve. <laughs> I could understand that. Like this, this works for that. Mm. It is bizarre, but at least it makes sense because it is the final song. So in her final words, her words are, I'm so in love with you that you are the person for me. So it's a good closer in my opinion. Yeah. And again, we get into me feeling... That's the easiest way to describe it. I really like it, and I really relate to it, and at the same time, I'm sort of like, well, fuck my donkey. All right, then. Well, let me go, let me go get a strap on real quick, and we'll, we'll make that happen for you. I don't even know what that means. It's just, I'm referencing a fucking Uwe Boll movie with that line, and it, you should never find yourself in that position. Yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, I... Oh boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, so, overall, let's give our scores for this album. Do I really have to give a numerical score? Because, I mean, there are a couple songs in the on the list I, weren't, I wasn't terribly into. Like, for instance, uh, Accelerate um, wasn't exactly a big deal to me. Pipe was interesting. I could definitely see that as, like, a sex song if I wanted to, like, throw that down and go, like, oh, baby, you want to come over here and get on my lap? But beyond that, wasn't a big deal to me. Um, Maria was interesting, kind of weird. Sick of Sitting was good. Uh, if we skip the the skits, mm -hmm. I liked well over three quarters of the song. So that puts my my score somewhere around like in the fours, like low four. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somewhere in the neck of the woods. 
yeah, I put my score somewhere around, like, we'll just say four, four out of five stars, because it was definitely a hell of a lot better than most of the other things <laughs> <I've> reviewed. <laughs> it's not the best album I've ever heard, because, I mean, I've heard some better albums overall, but I have some takeaways that I'll definitely be going back to to listen to in quite a bit, such as Masochist and Deserve. Mm. Those are two songs that will probably haunt me until the end of time in many good ways. Yeah. And some not so good ways. Like I'll be, you know, sitting around the corner one of these days and I'll be outside your flat and be like, Evan, let me in. The first words out of your mouth will be, how the fuck did you get here? <laughs> and the second will be, let me guess, you're listening to Christina Aguilera's Deserve right now, aren't you? And I'll have to, I'll have to nod and be like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, there you go. That's, that's my takeaway is deserve out of five. I... Uh, I really enjoyed this album. Same, it's not necessarily the best I've listened to, but when you consider that there's only really two songs on the album that I outright do not like, out of... You know, two songs I don't like out of... We'll say 12, because the skits don't really count as full songs. Yeah. So... Two songs out of 12, you know, the rest I really like from with varying degrees. So like I have actually made a point of scoring each song individually so I could work out an average. Yeah, that's the amount of in-depth I sometimes go to with these reviews. Um, it's because he's insane. <laughs> how could I be insane? I'm nowhere near Paris. Okay. <laughs> Enough bad, terrible references, okay? This is, this is a children's show, you fucking piece of shit. Anyway. And yes, I'm still using Cardi B to censor it, so enjoy the Cardi B noises! Anyway. You have no idea how much pain that is to edit in. I just want to point that out. Anyway, yeah, I would say I give the album a four out of five. Four out of five, yeah, that's... As stated, it's a good, good album. It's genuinely enjoyable if you... Even if you aren't a fan of her music, just honestly hop over to YouTube, listen to it, listen to a few tracks, just kind of get a feel for what you're getting yourself into. And if you like what you hear, buy it. It's genuinely worth yeah. it. Yeah, it's one of those few times where I'm I'm quite willing to stand behind the artist and go, "Fuck it." Even if you're not normally a fan of the person, go check this out. This is this is genuinely a treat. This is absolutely a treat. It's worth listening to. Um, you'll probably find a couple songs in there you're not particularly interested in, but overall, I would go and listen to her in concert. <laughs> just, just at this point to find out how many other creepy guys would be there. <laughs> uh, Going, I'm just here for, uh, for masochist. It sings to my soul. But anyway, yeah, just seek this out. I like listen to it on Spotify, YouTube, um, what is the app that you use? I listen to my stuff through Pandora Premium, which costs me a small penny per month, but I get access to all the music. Well, most of the music I could want to listen to. There are certain albums and certain bands that are not available, but most of the time I can get access to almost anything through it. Um, yeah, if you have access to it, of course, download it. Uh, regular Pandora is just a radio set, radio setup, and then you can pay for other tiers. Um, no, we're not being paid for this. <laughs> He's just just wanted to know. Mm. But yeah, I listen to I listen to most of the things we we listen to. I listen to it via Pandora. Um, thankfully, there's been nothing that we wanted to review that wasn't available in Pandora. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been a major pain in the ass. Oh no, no, there was one, but I ended up bowing out, and that was the one you did with Pierce. That, yeah, uh, that honey one. That's right. Yeah, they were they were mean enough not to put it up on there. Um, if we were ever to do. Uh, what was the name of those guys? The Flander, the Flander metal band. Oh yeah, um, uh, the Oakley Doakleys. Yes, annoyingly enough, they've blocked most of their stuff on Pandora's uh, premium side of things, so things like that won't pop up. But most things do, so it, it's basically just like Spotify at that point. Mm. Some yes, some no. Unless you pay for it, then fuck it, you can buy anything you want, and it's no big deal. But yeah, it's it's convenient. I could, I actually can listen to something that Edmund can't, and it's fucking the crap out of him it's great we don't even have the fucking album over here yet <laughs> i've got the mighty gold now right so yeah that's it for this episode next episode will be with my regular scar reviewer of richard we will be covering the mighty mighty boss stones 
once. I will still do the video editing, so you'll still see my lovely, charming visual stuff. So once we get a hold of while we're at it, we're going to review the shit out of that album. However, if it takes them too long to do that, I'll talk them into the J- the JC Beyonce album, and we'll do that first. Mm. It just depends on when you can get access to that. Yeah, like it came out on the fifteenth, but that doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean anything because it's not in HMV over here. It's not even in, in the fucking indie record shop over here, and they've actually said we will be getting it in. So I have no idea when it's coming over here. Don't worry, folks. Fuck! I'll make sure he has something to review. Worst case scenario, I will find some weird stuff. (laughs) Anyway, it's goodbye from Edmund Fuck My Life Scribbins and... It's this is everything out here on the table for me, Billy McDummer McFuckfuckstein, Sand, Sayonara, and me. All your masochism dreams be found true. I can truly say we definitely deserve this album. Good night!